In this video, we will be talking a lot about functions increasing and decreasing. So before we do that, it's really important that we have a solid understanding of what increasing and decreasing means. A function f is increasing on an interval if the f of x value is greater than the previous f of x value. So if we look on the interval from negative 1 to 1, that is where this function is increasing. And if we, are, if we look at the f of x value at x equals 0, which is 2, that one is greater than the previous one, which is greater than the previous value, which is greater than the previous value. So this means that the function is increasing. When f is increasing, the first derivative, f prime of x, has to be greater than 0. So f prime of x must be positive. This makes sense because along this interval of increasing, all the slopes of the tangent lines will be positive. For a function to be decreasing, a function decreases on an interval if the f of x value is less than the previous f of x value. So if we are looking at, let's say, let's say at 1.5, we're looking at the f of x value at 1.5, and then we go to the next one, well, that new one is less than the previous one. And then if we go to another new one, that's less than the previous one. That means that this function is decreasing on this interval. So when f is decreasing, f prime of x is less than zero. The first derivative, f prime of x, is negative. Again, that makes sense because all of our slopes of the tangent lines here are negative when the function is decreasing. These are the steps to find the intervals on which a function is increasing or decreasing. The first step is to identify the domain of the function. The second is to identify the critical points. Third is to make a sign chart for the first derivative and test the sign of the derivative in each of the intervals on the sign chart. And then lastly, you would analyze the sign chart and write a conclusive statement. Let's practice with example A. The function f is given by f of x is equal to x cubed minus 11x squared plus 39x minus 47. Find the intervals on which f is increasing and decreasing. So the first step here is to identify the domain of the function. In this case, this is a smooth polynomial curve, so it probably looks something like this on a, on a graph, and that means that the domain is going to stretch from negative infinity to infinity. The second step is to identify the critical points of the function. If you want to review critical points, please go check out my video on that. To identify the critical points, we first need to find f prime of x, so I will take the first derivative of function f. Critical points can occur when f prime of x is zero or undefined. There aren't any values of x that we can plug in that will make f prime of x undefined, but if we set f prime of x equal to zero, then we have zero equals three x squared minus 22 x plus 39, and we can factor that and hopefully get some values for x. So then I set each of these equal to zero. So I can say three x minus 13 is equal to zero. This means that x is equal to 13 thirds, and then I would have x is equal to three over here. These are both critical numbers. The third step is to make a sign chart for the first derivative. My sign chart just tells me whether the first derivative is positive or negative at various locations. So when I make my sign chart, in this case, because my domain goes from negative infinity to infinity, that's where my sign chart is going to go. So I'll have arrows on the ends going to infinity, going to negative infinity, and I'm going to label it f prime of x right below. And then the things that go on my sign chart are critical numbers and domain issues. I don't have any domain issues here. It's a nice, smooth, continuous domain from negative infinity to infinity, but I will put my critical numbers of three and 13 thirds on the sign chart. Now I need to test the sign of the derivative in each interval. So I need to pick a number between negative infinity and three and plug it into the f prime of x function. I'm going to pick zero. So if I have f prime of zero, I will have three times zero squared, which is zero, minus 22 times zero, which is zero, plus 39. So f prime of zero will be 39. And I don't actually care what that number is, as long as it's a positive or negative number, because that allows me to tell whether it's going to be positive or negative in that interval. Now I'm going to test a number between three and 13 thirds. I'm going to test four. So I will find f prime of four. And here I have three times 16, so 48 minus 88, which will be negative 40, plus 39 is negative one. So that is just barely a negative number, but it is still a negative number. So my negative goes right there on my sign chart. And then lastly, I need to test a number between 13 thirds and infinity. I'm going to pick five. And then I will have 75 minus 110. So negative 35 plus 39, which would be positive four. So that is a positive number. So then my positive value goes on my sign chart right there. So now I filled out my sign chart. And the next step is to analyze the sign chart and write a conclusive statement. F is increasing on the intervals on which the first derivative is positive or greater than zero. So in this case, we know that F will be increasing from negative infinity to three and from 13 thirds to infinity. 
And when we write the justifications, we always write that the function, the original function f of x is increasing on the closed interval from a to b because f prime of x is greater than zero on the open interval from a to b. The reason that we write the closed interval is because if we look back at our, at our definition of what it means for a function to be increasing, even at the point where the derivative is equal to zero, like we would have a horizontal tangent line, so the derivative is equal to zero here, even at that point, the value is greater than the value that came before it. So by our technical definition of increasing, the function is still increasing at x equals one, including x equals one. So that's why we write that it's increasing or decreasing on the closed interval. However, since the derivative is equal to zero at that point a, we have to write greater than zero on the open interval. We don't write greater than or equal to on the closed interval. We write greater than on the open interval. f of x is increasing from negative infinity to three with the bracket there because it's on a closed interval. We still leave infinity as an open interval and the closed interval from 13 thirds to infinity with the parenthesis there because f prime of x is greater than zero on the open interval from negative infinity to three and the open interval from 13 thirds to infinity. f of x is decreasing on the closed interval from three to 13 thirds because f prime of x is less than zero on the open interval from three to 13 thirds. And that's how you would do a proper justification. In order to find relative extrema algebraically, we use what's called the first derivative test. Relative maximums occur when the first derivative changes from positive to negative. This makes sense because if we look at our graph over here, it looks like we have a relative maximum at x equals one. On the left side, the first derivative would be positive because those slopes of the tangent line are positive. But on the right side, once we pass x equaling one, the slopes of the tangent lines are negative. So when the first derivative or the slope of the tangent line is changing from positive to negative, we have a relative maximum at that value. Relative minimums occur when the first derivative changes from negative to positive. Here's our relative minimum over here. On the left side, the slope of the tangent lines are going to be negative, but on the right side, the slopes of the tangent lines are positive. This means that we have a relative minimum at that value. Remember that all relative extrema occur at critical points. Therefore, if we are trying to find relative extrema algebraically, one of our first steps is going to be identifying the critical points of the function so that we can identify the relative extrema. The first step is to identify the domain, then the critical points. And then we make a sign chart for the first derivative, testing the sign of the derivative in each interval. And then we analyze the sign chart and write a conclusive statement. These steps are extremely similar to the steps for finding the intervals on which functions are increasing and decreasing, which is why I put these two topics together in one video. The only thing that's different is the conclusive statement. It's how you justify your answer. So let's practice justifying our answer with that previous example. So we're going to look at the same function and we're going to determine where it has relative extrema. So here is our sign chart. Remember that we have a relative maximum when the first derivative changes from positive to negative. This means that we have a relative maximum at x equals three. So the way that we're going to justify that, we're going to use our justification f of x has a relative maximum at x equals three because x equals three is a critical number and f prime of x changes from positive to negative at x equals three. Now we need to look for where we have relative minimums. In this case, we are going to have a relative minimum at x equals 13 thirds because at 13 thirds, which is a critical number, the first derivative changes from negative to positive. Feel free to pause and take a look at the explanation in more detail. Let g of x equal 3x squared minus 3 over x cubed. Find the intervals on which g is increasing and decreasing. Then find the value or values of x for which g of x has relative extrema. The very first step is to determine the domain. In this case, I can plug in any x coordinate that I want into my g of x function except x equaling 0, because when I plug in 0, I would get something over 0, which you cannot do. So my domain is going to be all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity, but x cannot equal zero. Next step is to identify my critical numbers. So I will first take the derivative of g of x. I'll need to use the quotient rule here. In this case, g prime of x is equal to negative three x to the fourth plus nine x squared all over x to the sixth. Now this is just the first step in finding my critical points. The next step is to determine what values of x can I plug in that will make g of x equal to zero or undefined. 
In order to make it undefined, I would have to be dividing by zero. So X would need to equal zero. So I would say X equals zero is one of my critical points. But wait, X equals zero is not even in the domain, which means that it cannot be a critical point. So now I will check if there are any values that I can plug in that will make G prime of X equal to zero. So I will say zero is equal to my numerator here. Zero is equal to negative three X to the fourth plus nine X squared. Then I can pull out a negative three X squared from both of these terms. And for this side, I would get negative three X squared is equal to zero, which means that X is equal to zero, which I already determined not in my domain, can't be a critical point. And then I would get X is equal to plus or minus the square root of three. That is within my domain. So those are going to be my critical points. Now I will make my sign chart. At this point, I wanna mention two things about sign charts. The first thing, a sign chart is really helpful, but you do not get any credit for making a sign chart all by itself if you're on the AP exam. You have to have an additional explanation. You can't just have that sign chart. The second thing is that your domain issues also go on your sign chart. So even though X equaling zero is not a critical point, because it's a domain issue, we have to have zero on our sign chart. We also have our critical points on the sign chart, which means that negative rad three goes on and rad three goes on. Now I need to test some values to determine what are my signs in each of these intervals. So for this interval over here, I'm going to test negative two. I'm going to plug in negative two to G prime of X. This is going to be a negative value because we'll have negative 48 plus 36, which is a negative number all over 64. So that is going to be negative. My negative goes on my sign chart right there. Now I will test G prime of negative one. This is going to be equal to six, which is a positive number. So positive is on my sign chart there. Then I will test G prime of one for this interval. Also six, another positive number. And then I will test two. This is another negative number. So now I have my completed sign chart. And now I just need to do my analysis to determine where is, is G increasing and decreasing and where are the relative extrema. When I write my conclusive statement, I'm going to have to be very careful because X equals zero is not even a part of my domain. So I can't write that G of X is increasing on the closed interval from negative rad three to rad three because that includes zero. And G of X cannot be increasing on a location where it's not even defined because G of X is not defined at X equals zero. G of X is increasing on the interval from negative rad three with a bracket to zero with a parenthesis because it cannot include zero and a parenthesis zero comma rad three with a bracket because G prime of X is greater than zero on the open interval from negative rad three to zero and the open interval from zero to rad three. And now I will do my justification for decreasing. Now to find my relative minimums and maximums, I know that I'm going to have a relative minimum at X equals negative rad three because X equals negative rad three is a critical number. And at X equals negative rad three, G prime of X changes from negative to positive. I'm also going to have a relative maximum at X equals rad three because X equals rad three is a critical number. And at X equals rad three, G prime of X changes from positive to negative. The function f is given by f of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 8 squared for negative 10 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5. Find the intervals on which f is increasing and the values of x at which f has relative extrema on the closed interval from negative 10 to 5. When I identify my domain here, they gave me my domain. It's the closed interval from negative 10 to 5. Now I will identify the critical points. And the first step in that is to determine f prime of x. So I'm first going to rewrite f of x as x plus eight to the power of two thirds to make it easier to use the power rule. And then I will find f prime of x. Critical numbers can occur when the first derivative f prime of x is undefined or equal to zero. There aren't any values of x that I can plug in that will make it equal to zero because my numerator is always gonna be two. So it's always gonna be two over something but I can plug in a value of X that will make the denominator equal to zero, which will make F prime of X undefined. So I'm going to set my denominator equal to zero. I will say three times the cube root of X plus eight is equal to zero. This means that the cube root of X plus eight is equal to zero, cube both sides and you get X plus eight is equal to zero. So X is equal to negative eight. 
that will be one of my critical numbers. And I think that that's going to be my only critical number in this case. So when I go to make my sign chart, instead of having it go all the way from negative infinity to infinity, because I'm given a restricted domain, it's only going to go from negative 10 to 5. And I need to put negative 8 on there. Now I will test a number in each interval. So first I will find f prime of negative 9. This is equal to negative 2 thirds. So it will be negative in that interval. And then I will find f prime of 0. This is equal to 2 sixths, or 1 third, which is a positive number. So that's my completed sign chart. Now I just need to do my interpretation. So it's not even asking for increasing and decreasing, it's just saying find the intervals on which f is increasing. I know that it's going to increase on the closed interval from negative 8 to 5, because the first derivative, f prime of x, is positive on the open interval from negative 8 to 5. To identify the relative extrema, I have to look at my sign chart again. I know that I'm going to have a relative minimum at x equals negative 8 because x equals negative 8 is a critical number and at x equals negative 8 the first derivative changes from negative to positive. There's my explanation. Let f of x be equal to 3 minus the absolute value of x plus 4. Find the intervals on which f is increasing and decreasing. Then find the relative extrema of f. So when you see a really, really easy function like this one, where you can easily picture it in your head, you could graph it out easily, what you may want to do is do just that, just graph it out. Because if you haven't realized, going through that algebraic process of finding intervals of increase and decrease and relative extrema is a lot of work. So if you are able to just look at a graph, then by all means do that. So I'm going to set up my little graph here. And then I need to look at the transformations that have been applied to the parent function of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So it looks like it has been moved up three units. So at three right here, that will be where it starts. And then x plus four, that means it's been moved four units to the left. So we have negative four over here. Vertex will be at negative four, three. And then since it's negative, it will be going down. And obviously this is not a perfect graph, but it's enough to give me the idea. So the intervals on which is increasing and decreasing, I know it's going to be increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative four and decreasing on the interval from negative four to infinity. So I'm going to write that out. And since I need to do a proper justification, what I'm going to say is I'm going to still use that justification of it's increasing on a certain interval because f prime of x is greater than zero on that open interval. So there's my explanation for the increasing and decreasing with my justification. It's increasing on the closed interval because f prime of x is greater than zero on the open interval. It's decreasing on the closed interval because f prime of x is less than zero on the open interval. And then to find the relative extrema, I can see on my graph, I've got a relative maximum and the absolute maximum, but here it's talking about the relative extrema. So relative maximum at x equals negative four. And if I want to be even more specific, I could say I have a relative maximum at negative four comma three, listing that coordinate point. And my justification for that will be the same as always. It's because that is a critical number and it's because f prime of x is changing from negative to positive at that location. There's my justification. Let f be the function defined by f of x equals cosine x times e to the x on the interval from negative pi to pi, on the closed interval from negative pi to pi. Find the intervals on which f is increasing and decreasing. So unfortunately, this is not one that we can sketch out like we did above. So what we're gonna have to do is follow that process. So first step is to identify the domain. In this case, they gave us our domain. It is the closed interval from negative pi to pi. And I also want to check the function just to make sure there are no additional domain requirements. Cosine x, you can plug in anything for x and be good. e to the x, that function looks like this. So you can also plug in anything for x and be okay. So now I've identified my domain. Now it is time to find f prime of x. I will use the product rule here. And now I need to find my critical numbers. So critical numbers can occur when f prime of x either does not exist or when it's equal to zero. Unfortunately, there are no values for x that I can plug in that will make this does not exist or that will make f prime of x undefined. But what I can do is set it equal to zero. So I'll say zero is equal to, and then I'm going to factor out an e to the x to make it easier to solve. So e to the x, parentheses, and then on the inside, I will have cosine x minus sine of x. Now I will set each one of these equal to zero. 
for e to the x is equal to zero, the way that I would find that is, is apply the natural log to both sides to get rid of the e. Unfortunately, natural log of zero is a number that does not exist. Because if we look at the graph of the natural log, that looks like this. So there is no defined value for the natural log of zero. So that is unfortunately not a critical number that we can use. Let's test the other one. Cosine of x minus sine of x is equal to zero. So I need to find some value for x that I can plug in that is going to make the cosine and sine be the exact same so that I can have one number minus that same number, which will produce zero. So the only situation in which I'm gonna get that, if I look over at my unit circle, I could have one at pi over four, because at pi over four, the cosine value is rad two over two and the sine value is rad two over two, or I could have five pi over four, because there the cosine value is negative rad two over two and the sine value is negative rad two over two. So I can also rearrange this, I can say cosine x, needs to be equal to sine of x, if that helps you think about it a little bit more. These are the points where this is going to be true. So x can either be equal to pi over four, or x can be, can be equal to five pi over four. But five pi over four is not in the specified domain from negative pi to pi. What I can do though, is kind of go the other way on the unit circle. So if I were to go around this way, this would be going into the negative region, which is okay because I can go up to negative pi. So I would have negative pi over four, negative pi over two, negative three pi over four, and that is what I, that is another value. So I can say x is equal to negative three pi over four, because on the unit circle, that's the same thing as five pi over four. So I'm gonna get rid of that. These are my critical numbers. So when I make my sign chart, these will be what I plot, and it's going to be restricted from negative pi to pi. Now I can start testing intervals to determine whether the derivative will be positive or negative. So in this window, I'm going to test negative five pi over six. So I will find f prime of negative five pi over six. And I'm going to plug that into f prime of x, which is equal to cosine x times e to the x plus e to the x times negative sine of x or e to the x times cosine x minus sine x. This one's a little easier, so I'm gonna do that one. That one is equal to f prime of x. So this will be e to the power of negative five pi over six, parentheses, and then the cosine of negative five pi over six. Remember, negative five pi over six is the same thing as seven pi over six. And the cosine of seven pi over six is negative rad three over two. And then we have negative rad three over two minus the sine of seven pi over six, which is negative one half. So this will be negative rad three over two plus one half. And again, we don't need to actually evaluate this one, thank goodness, because this one would not be fun to evaluate. All that we are looking for is, is it a positive value or is it a negative value? So let's look at the curve of e to the x to determine whether that portion is going to be positive or negative. So this is my curve of e to the x. This is a very rough sketch. If we take e to the power of negative five pi over six, that is going to be a positive value. It might be a small positive value, but it is going to be a positive value. So we're going to have a positive value times, and then this inside here is going to be a negative value. So positive times negative, that produces a negative value. So then down here on our sign chart, we will mark in a negative for that interval. And then in this window, I'm going to test zero, f prime of zero. The cosine of zero is one, and the sine of zero is zero. So we have e to the power of zero, which is one, times one, which is going to produce a positive number. So positive goes on my sign chart there. Then I will find f prime of pi over two. So e to the power of pi over two times, and then cosine pi over two is zero, minus sine of pi over two is one. So e to the power of pi over two, that will be a positive number, positive value. So I have a positive times a negative, which is going to make a negative. So here is my filled out sign chart. And now I just need to do my interpretation, find the intervals on which it is increasing and decreasing. F will be increasing on the closed interval from negative three pi over four to pi over four, because F prime of X is greater than zero on the open interval from negative three pi over four to pi over four. And then for my decreasing values, I will do a very similar justification. There's my justification. For which value or values of x does the function f of x equals x times the square root of 100 minus x squared have a relative maximum or minimum? 
The first step here is to identify the domain. I know that I can't take the square root of a negative number, so I know that 100 minus x squared, which is what's under the rad, needs to be greater than or equal to zero. This means that negative x squared needs to be greater than or equal to negative 100. And then when I divide both sides by negative one, I have to remember to flip the sign. x squared has to be less than or equal to 100. This means that x cannot be below negative 10 and it cannot be above 10. If you try to plug in negative 11, you'll get negative 11 squared, which is 121. That's not less than or equal to 100. If you plug in positive 11, 11 squared 121 is not less than or equal to 100. So this means that the domain is on the closed interval from negative 10 to 10. That is my domain. Now I'm going to search for critical numbers. So the first step is to find f prime of x, the first derivative. In this case, I'm going to need to use the product and chain rule. So I've started doing the product rule. I did first times the derivative of the second. And when I'm taking the derivative of the second, I'm going to need to use the chain rule because I took the derivative of the outside function, the square root. But then my inside function is 100 minus x squared. So I'm going to need to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then I'm going to go clean this up a bit. I'd really like to get these two terms into one term so that I can better see my derivative. So what I'm going to do, I need to get both of them to a common denominator of the square root of 100 minus x squared. Right now, the denominator of this second term is simply a 1. So to get it to that common denominator, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this second part by the square root of 100 minus x squared. If I have the square root of 100 minus x squared times the square root of 100 minus x squared, that's simply going to be 100 minus x squared. So when I rewrite my derivative, I will have negative x squared plus 100 minus x squared all over the square root of 100 minus x squared. And I can go clean that up even a little bit further. Okay, so there is my finished derivative. Now I need to start looking for critical points. So one way that I can have a critical point is have the numerator of this derivative equal to zero because that will make the derivative equal to zero. Zero over anything is going to be zero. So I will set negative 2x squared plus 100 equal to zero and solve. And I'm getting x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 50. This is within my domain from negative 10 to 10. Now I will set my denominator equal to zero to see if there are any values that will make the first derivative undefined. Now I got x is equal to plus or minus 10. However, these are endpoints and critical numbers cannot exist at endpoints. I know that that's exactly where my domain is from negative 10 to 10. So these are not critical numbers. Now I'm going to go make my sign chart. Now I will test a value for f prime of x between negative rad 50 and negative 10. I'm going to pick negative 8. So now I have negative 2 times 64 plus 100, which is going to produce a negative on top over, and I know that my square root will never give me a negative, so it's going to be a negative over a positive, which is a negative. So a negative sign goes right there. Now I will test f prime of 0 to get this window right here on my sign chart. I would get 100 over the square root of 100, which is 10, which is a positive number. Now I will test f prime of 8. And I'm getting that same thing as I did up here. So I know that this one is also going to be a negative over a positive, which will produce a negative on my sign chart. Now I just need to interpret. So it's asking me for which values of x does the function have a relative maximum or minimum. So I'm not looking for intervals of increase and decrease. I'm just looking for the relative extrema. I know that f of x is going to have a relative minimum at x equals negative rad 50 because x equals negative rad 50 is a critical number and f prime of x changes from negative to positive at x equals negative rad 50. To justify my relative maximum, I will say f has a relative maximum at x equals rad 50 because x equals rad 50 is another critical number and f prime of x changes from positive to negative at x equals rad 50. There's my explanation. Make sure to watch my next video, which will cover using the graphing calculator for these topics and interpreting graphs.